Welcome to our Steam star for today, who is Dr. Cheryl Poplin, and she is a veterinarian and a canine rehabilita rehabilitation therapist. So, um, welcome. Where are you located, Cheryl? I, I am in Marietta, Georgia. Yeah. So. so you're actually you're actually very close. We could probably yeah. um, open our doors and talk to each other across the street. But yeah, so yeah, thank you, thank you for joining us. We're delighted to have you. So um, now I always start with the same question, and that is um, to do with what you like doing at school when you were probably about the same age as some of the people um, on this call today. So what was your favourite subject when you were in elementary school? Probably chorus. <laughs> um, I was at art. Those were usually my two favorite subjects. Yeah, yeah. And um, you're very musical. Yes. Yeah, I was in band actually all the way up until my after my until college. Um, I played clarinet, so I was in marching band in high school, and yeah, yeah, it was very musical. A very, wow. I grew up in a very musical household. <laughs> so, okay. yeah. So you had um, multiple talents when you were a child. That sounds that sounds like if it's a musical household, it must have been a, a very um, harmonious household. Very sometimes, lovely. sometimes, okay. Sometimes. <laughs> okay. And so, um, if you weren't at school and you weren't playing an instrument, was there anything else which you really loved doing when you were a child? Um, in the summer times, I swam. So I was on swim team, um, and I was very active at my synagogue youth group. Um, so coming up, that was more so middle school, high school. Um, but yeah, I was very active and just kind of just being outdoors in general. We liked, I was in Girl Scouts as well, um, all the way to eighth grade. Um, so yeah, yeah, I was kind of had a lot of extracurricular activities outside of school. So. Yeah, you you must have kept your kept your parents very busy with uh, oh, yeah. being taken <laughs> to all of those places. At one point, I was riding horses as well, but you know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, oh, horses. You mentioned an animal there. So, my next question was going to be: Did you actually have any pets as a child? I did. So I started out with fish, and then I ended up with hamsters, and then we got a dog. Um, and then I had a, I had a dog until uh, until now. I mean, I still have dogs now. So, um, so we kind of that's kind of where I started was was with my little goldfish, and then went from there. <laughs> so. And do you do you remember the first time? You know, obviously you're a veteran. I'm just going to say vet. I can't say yep. that long word. <laughs> do you do you? You're a vet now, but do you actually remember the first time you cared for an animal or you looked after a sick animal? So, yeah, so I was, I don't know, I, I was in elementary school um, and we found a very ill, injured bird in the backyard and we actually, we, right around the corner, there's a rehabilitation for wildlife facility called the Chattahoochee Nature Center. Um, and then we brought it there so they actually were able to help the bird and get it back into flight. It was actually able to go back into the wild, which was great. So I got yeah, that's them. that's cool, and I suspect there there are probably some some of um, the people listening here actually have done something very similar. I think that's a you know, we we're always on the lookout, aren't we, when we're out in in case we come across any animals that aren't quite um, making making as much of their lives as they could. So okay, um, so after elementary school, then you know you went to middle school. You talked about like, all those extracurricular activities that you loved doing, um, and then you were in high school, and you actually had to do some serious studying to get where you are now. So, what did your high school um, curriculum look like? What were you What were you doing? What was your schedule? So, um, I did a lot of extra science classes. Um, my favorite was actually anatomy, physiology, and then microbio. Microbiology were the two that I ended up liking the most. Um, but I was in band, so that was kind of my musical side of everything. I took just regular on-level classes. I didn't do a ton of, I didn't do any AP classes, and I did just a couple of honors just because I wanted to get more into the science side of it. Um, but I knew that my curriculum going into college was going to be really tough and I didn't want to burn out in high school. So um, 
now it may be different if I were to have gone back. I maybe if I were to have been back in high school, I maybe would have done a few more AP in the science courses. But um, you know, I think what I did at the time was, was perfect for what I wanted to do later on. So. And so then later on, later on was um, college. You yeah. you decided to go to college. What did you What did you major in first of all? In college. So I started out in um, I started out in uh, biological sciences, which is at, at UGA. I was at UGA, um, University of Georgia, um, and that's a three-year degree, which ultimately kind of feeds right into vet school. But I decided to transition, actually, I think my sophomore year of, of college, to animal science, um, and ended up graduating with an animal science degree. Um, where I was actually able to work with more large animal, farm animal type animals, but also small animals to dogs and cats, um, because I had to do some internships while I was there. I got to do research while I was that, getting that degree as well, uh, reproductive research with, with some of the farm animals. Um, and then... Oh, wow, farm animals. So, so yeah. it wasn't it wasn't just uh, the normal pets that you would no, see? No, yeah, no. I worked, I worked with horses and cows and sheep and goats. Yeah, we got in pigs. We got to do everything. So, yeah, which you don't really which, get experience in Atlanta with that because there's not a lot of farm farmland around here. So, um, it was kind of a nice experience for me to kind of open my eyes to a different kind of kind of like medicine or working with different types of animals. So, okay. And so, of your of all of those animals, did did you have a favorite that you most enjoyed? Um. Well, and and. I loved horses. I've always loved horses. Um, I actually really enjoyed working with sheep. Um, I, the research I did was actually reproductive research. Um, so I, I got to work on syncing up estrus cycles so that breeding season was shorter um, for the farmers to make it easier on them. So they, staffing wise, they were able to get, get lambs out a lot quicker um, and safer um, so that, that it was easier for the, for the ewes to, to have the babies. So yeah, that was that was probably my favorite. So, so you got to um, cuddle lots of really cute little fluffy I, animals. I did. <laughs> did you Which get to the benefit of everything because <laughs> you get to oh. the cute animals. <laughs> well, definitely. So, yeah. so you did four four years of undergrad. Mm -hmm. So four years at university, and then and then what um, did you go on to do? So I actually worked for two years as a veterinary technician full-time, um, so the nurse to, to the doctors, um, and then I was more of a veterinary assistant, but I, you know, I, I did a lot of uh, help surgeries, I helped getting histories and helping hold animals during appointments, um, and, you know, helped with dental cleaning, and stuff like that, and then I uh, went to vet school after the two years, for four years, um, and then once I graduated vet school, I went straight into general practice. Um, and then I was at the my previous clinic for about seven and a half years. And then recently transitioned after taking my rehab cert my canine rehab certification um, recently to, to canine rehab and uh, sports medicine is now where I'm focused. So Wow. Okay. So we, we, we've just for many yep, years. That was in, a long in, <laughs> to a very short amount of time. So let's get yeah. back to the general practice. So what, yeah. what is general practice as a vet? How could you describe so that? So general practice? practice would be like going to like your pediatrician or your family doctor. Um, I usually see all the animals from puppyhood to, to until their geriatric age um, for their vaccines every year, but also when they get sick. Um, I'm usually the, I was the first line for people to go to um, to get them to feel better and then now I'm more in specialty. Uh, so now I'm, um, just what's, what does geriatric mean? So an older patient. So oh, okay. like older dog, mm -hmm. older dog, older patient, older cat. Okay. So you would, you'd see the animals right from when they were puppies and then you'd look after them d during, you know, well, whole until, the, until yeah. they became older. Okay. Yeah. And um, so I have to say that one of the things that's always, intrigued me is how do you um treat an animal that can't tell you where it hurts so that's so in veterinary medicine it's very similar to like pediatrics and human medicine um you have to go off the owners or the parents of the pet what they're saying what they're seeing at home 
um, but also your physical exam. So actually putting my hands on the animal and figuring out if something's painful or if something doesn't sound right with their heart or if their belly feels funny um, or if a joint doesn't feel right when they're when you move their leg around. Um, so palpation of an animal is really important because they can't always tell you and animals hide a lot of their diseases. So you kind of have to, and blood work, you know, doing doing more like internal medicine kind of like workups um, is important because we can't always just feel it. You have to kind of see what's going on with their, what's going on within their body as well. So, yeah. Okay, so you're, you're, you're looking at the animal, you're talking to the owner about how they might have been behaving and then you're feeling the animal and, and then you're also taking blood so that you're using, you're using science as well as, as you know, just looking at the animal. So um, do you remember what was the first complaint, the first illness that you um, treated as a vet coming out of vet school? So in Georgia, the most common <laughs> uh, is probably skin disease. Um, so allergies, it was probably the first case that I saw was an itchy dog. Uh, <laughs> usually that, that comes along with skin infection. So um, that's and an ear infection. So I think that was the first case that I treated was, was, was that. Okay, right. And how do you treat um, sk uh, skin issues? It depends. Sometimes it's um, antibiotics, like oral antibiotics. Sometimes it's medicated shampoos um, or creams, depending on what it is. Um, for ears, you, there's topical medication that we put in the ear to help it get controlled. And if it's something more like a food allergy, we change the diet to get them to resolve as well. Okay, that's, that's great. So, um, so if we fast forward now, canine rehabilitation therapist is so is, is that more to do with um uh treating dogs that are healthy <laughs> <laughs> yes and no yes and no um so it's you can kind of relate it to like human pt um so a lot of it is post-surgical cases or neuro cases neurologic cases um, but it's also fitness cases. So dogs that are doing a sport that want to maintain fitness or build up strength so that they don't injure themselves. So it's more preventative. Um, but we do see a lot of, um, older patients that have arthritis issues or pain. Um, and you know, so that we try to get them comfortable and have a good quality of life, you know, make so, the best life. Yes. Yeah. And I, and, and when we were talking before, um, now you would telling me all about um, how you keep working dogs healthy. So yeah. and I found that fascinating. So what type of working dogs do you work with? Um, so we can we work with farm dogs so or hunting dogs, dogs that go out and um, help help hunters. Um, we work with a lot of um, I know in the past we've worked with some police dogs. Um, we've worked with sniffing dogs like bomb sniffing dogs. Um, uh, or, or just like if you go to the airport and a dog is sniffing like for the bags just to make sure everything smells okay um, we work with those as well um, you know we work with farm dogs as well so herding dogs that help keep you know their herd safe um, so we work with all different types of, of working dogs with that yeah because that's that's fascinating. You don't really think about when you're when you've got your pet at home. You don't really think about all those other animals who are out there and actually doing great jobs to help help people. So, um, what about um, uh, support animals or guide dogs for people who can't see? Do you have any? Yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We we do have um, a lot of therapy dogs that come as well. Yep. Um, yeah, because they they you want to keep them going, keep them happy and healthy as long yeah. as you can, and and make sure that they're able to do their job because that's the most important one um, is to keep them healthy. So. Brilliant. Okay, so we've got quite a lot of questions already. Yep. So um, at this point, the mic. Are we ready to go? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we've got a few good ones here. So uh, first, Olivia from California got a good question. So Bill, could you help me find a way? Okay, I just found her at Spotlight. Okay. Do you know cat anatomy? I do. 
I do. I've worked with cats for a long time. I actually worked with a lot of cats at my, my previous job um, when I was in general practice. So I know cat anatomy quite well. Cool. I like cats. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're fun animals. They definitely are their own. I like to call them their own animal. They like to tell you what they want and they only let you do what they want. So <laughs> yeah, they're fun to work with. All right, uh, the next question we have is from Riley. Riley, could you ask your question, please? Hi. Um, I was wondering what's the hardest thing you have to do as a vet? Say that again. Was, what's the hardest the thing hardest. you can do as a vet? Probably to. Um, explain how to do a procedure to an owner um to to a pet a pet parent um that may be a little more invasive like a, t a certain type of surgery um and how to make sure that they understand what's going on i think that's probably the hardest conversation Peyton, are you there? Maybe not. Okay, maybe we can. Okay, we can try coming back later. Okay. All right, um, we had another good question from Eva Rose. Hello. Uh, first... There you go. Do you know any breeds of hyperallergenic dogs? There, so there's some dogs that are going to be more hypoallergenic, but they're all going to have dander, um, and that's usually what we're allergic to. But oh, any of the like poodles or um, more hair-based dogs, um, like silky terriers or um, wire hair terriers, those kind of dogs are going to be more hypoallergenic because they don't have as much shedding. Their fur is not everywhere. Um, but in general, like your poodle breeds are going to be the most hypoallergenic. Um, but you could still have allergies just in just to their dander, even if they're not you're not allergic to their fur. My mom was allergic to any type of animal with fur or feathers, and I really wanted to become a veterinarian, so I they removed a lot of problems in that plan. Yeah, <laughs> but you may not be allergic, so you know you can also desensitize yourself. Um, there's there's a lot of doctors out there for allergies. Um, in the human in the human medicine side that help with allergies to that kind of thing. So also, it's decent, as it's you. What is the um, hardest part about veterinarian school? Oh, the studying. <laughs> um, it's the sheer volume of information you have to learn in, in only four years. And so you're studying all the time. Um, and it's so much information. And you're not just learning one species, you're learning every species. So... Um, you know, you have to kind of learn every type of animal. So it's it's different than in like human medicine, you're only learning one. Whereas in animals, you're learning like everything. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, all right, thank you, Ava. All right, great questions, thank you. All right, um, next one, uh, Rogers had a couple of good questions. So can we start with Rogers? Um, <coughs> why do, why are a lot of people allergic to cats? You know, that's a good question. Um, I probably to do with the way that their dander is formed. Um, and they probably are just more reactive um, type of dander versus a dog. Um, yeah. And is there any dog that doesn't shed hair? There's a lot, actually. I mean, they all will, you know, just like you or I, where we lose hair every once in a while, too. They're never going to be completely without shedding hair, but there's a lot of dogs. Anything with a curly coat or any, like, wiry kind of hair dogs tend to not shed as much, like a like a Yorkie or a Silky Terrier. That kind of hair tends to not, not shed quite as much. Excellent. All right. Good questions, kids. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, next, uh, Shailen Shepherd. Questions. So, Shailen? What was the craziest animal you've ever worked with? Oh, I got to work with some turtles when I was in vet school. Um, 
some soft shell turtles from one of the one of the zoos in the area. It was a pretty interesting experience to work with them. I have a pet turtle. He's like, I don't know what kind he is, but he's like, I think he's a musk. Like, he's kind of tiny. He's like pretty tiny. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Thank you, Shailen. Super. All right. Um, Ash, Isa, and Ruby have a question. Oh. Oh, Just have to unmute yourself, Ash, Isa, and Ruby. Thank you. I have, <laughs> um, many times. Um, in general practice, you get a lot of emergencies that'll come in. So you do have to, you have to save some of their lives that way. Um, if they get into a situation where they have, they're really sick, you gotta get them feeling better quick. Someone was actually asking earlier in the chat, um, well, they weren't asking, they said that their dog had been bitten by a snake about mm -hmm would seem to be a great situation where you could um, you could do some, some, match some of your veterinary magic and, and save <laughs> the animal's life. Yeah, yeah, snake bites are pretty common in Georgia. Um, so yeah, we do see quite a bit of them. Um, depending on where it is, sometimes they're more emergent than others. If it's on the face, usually it's more emergent. So getting that swelling down quickly is important. All right, next question is from Salman and Khadija. So, um, did you ever take care of like a stray cat? Yeah, I've taken care of lots of stray cats. Um, it's really important if you do have a cat, it's really important to microchip them so that they can get back to you if they do ever get lost. But um, yeah, when I was in vet school, I actually did um, part of my rotations when my fourth year of vet school where we get to do more hands-on work. Um, I got to work with some, some stray cats um, for spaying and neutering and vaccinating them and making sure that they were healthy and then release them back into the area that they were in to keep, you know. Oh, were, keep they, were they scared? Yeah, they can be scared, but we work with them so that we try to make it less stressful for them when they're in the clinic. Uh-huh. All right, good questions, kids. All right, thank you. All right, next one's from Marley. What's the hardest part about being a veterinarian? Hmm, probably making sure that the animal is happy and pain free. I think that's probably the hardest part because sometimes it can be difficult to know when they're when they're feeling good. Excellent. We have a very specific question from Olivia. Olivia from California. Yeah, go ahead, Olivia. Good. Um, well, what is, well, I don't know how to say it, because I just, I watch cat cam cameras, so mm -hmm. I heard about it. What is, um, does anybody know how to say it? Cerebellar hypoplasia? So cerebellar hypoplasia, it's so your brain has different parts to it, and one of the parts is your cerebellum. So sometimes when kittens or puppies are born, that, that cerebellum cannot be developed quite as much, and it causes them to have um, neurologic disorders where they can't move properly. So um, actually what I do currently in rehab, we work with patients like that using acupuncture and um, different rehab, uh, different PT techniques um, or therapy techniques to teach them how to more stable so they can be functional um, and actually be able to have a normal life or a more normal life. We actually have a, a wither right now that has that going, that's, that's come into the practice. In. Cool and weird. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Definitely cool and weird. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Olivia. Good. All right. Let's go to Kira. Kira, can you ask yours? Hey. 
So have you ever had a patient with cancer, Dr. Cheryl? I have a lot, unfortunately. Yeah. Unfortunately, because our, our, our pets are living longer and fortunate that our pets are living longer and longer, we're seeing more and more of it. Um, but in, uh, we all, but we have veterinary oncologists, just like in humans that can help with, help with that and, you know, do treatments for the animals to help extend their lives longer. All right. Uh, let's go to, uh, Philip Paley had a question. So Philip. Have you ever tamed a stray cat or dog? Um, yes. So we've had some kitties that were what we consider feral. Um, our, our stray kitties are, are feral kitties. Um, we usually, we've been able to find some homes for them when they've been actually become really great indoor kitties um, or indoor outdoor kitties for people. Yeah. All right, excellent. Okay, then we had a very practical question from Reese and Kylie. Reese and Kylie, we'll get you up here. Um, how do you how much playtime does a dog need a day? Oh, it depends on the dog. Um, and it depends on their age. Puppies play really hard and then sleep really hard. Um, older dogs play a lot shorter amount of time and then sleep really hard. <laughs> so it, it's hard to say. But they play, it, as long as they play normal amount of time for them, then it, that's okay. <laughs> Question. Yeah. Can you help sick animals? Can I hit help sick animals? Uh, yeah, of course. That's that's what I like to do. I like to make them feel better. So I try to make sure if I have a sick animal come in, I can get them feeling better. They just said wild animals. They help sick wild animals. Oh. Mm -hmm. And the third one is not a question, but we have a dog too. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> What's your puppy's name? Reese, tell us your their name. Um, her name is Raven. Raven? Oh, that's a cute name. Aww. <laughs> Raven. All right, thanks, girls. All right, very good. All right, a few more here. I've got one from Kira. K E I R A. Just out of curiosity, have you ever had a wolf as a patient? At a wolf? No, I have not. But I do have friends who work in zoo medicine that... Um, I that find that hard to believe. What, me not working with a wolf? Yeah, because te technically dogs are wolves. Well, they're domesticated wolves, and they've been so... <laughs> yeah, so they're basically wolves. <laughs> So if you look at like a, a chihuahua versus a wolf, yeah, yeah they, they come from the same original line, but over it's time, just a little funny joke. Over time, it changes. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you. All right. We had a couple questions from Katie with three exclamation marks. Let's see there's... Um. Okay. Um. I wanted to oh. ask. Um. How long have you been a vet so far? So I've been a veterinarian since 2013. Oh, cool. And um, what equipment do you use? Say that again? What equipment do you use? What equipment do I use? Well, right now I use a lot of um, lasers and shockwave. Um, and we use a lot of therapy tools like balance discs and cavaletti poles and, and big blow up peanut um, and balance and balancing discs and that kind of thing. And I was about to type actually a couple more questions. <laughs> okay. Um, I was also going to ask, um, like, in the animals that um, you help, like from sickness, have you ever helped one with heartworm? I have, yeah. Heartworm so disease is really prevalent in, in our area. So, um, 
And yeah. what does it look like? The heartworm? Uh -huh. So heart, heartworms, they're, they look like really skinny spaghetti. They're really long and they look like big spaghetti. Yeah. <laughs> they get dirt in the, in their insides, in the dog's insides. So they, so heartworms live in the heart. Um, so heartworms, the adult worms live in the heart. So there's four, there's different stages in the life cycle of a heartworm. One of which lives in the mosquito. And then when a mosquito bites a dog, they have larvae that they put inside the dog and goes through the bloodstream. And then that larva matures into an adult heartworm and actually lives in the heart until it dies. And it produces um, bait there and it creates more larva. Um, what happens to the dog if it gets like too much? So sometimes it can cause heart problems for them and lung problems as well. Yeah, I think we actually had a, um, a dog with with heartworm, um, for, and they lived a very very normal life because we had medication yep. for them. And I think that that is that is you know it, it's not really a huge problem nowadays like it might have been because of modern medication. So yep. yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah. they do really well with treatment most of the time. Yeah, exactly. Morgan, exactly. okay, here we go. Uh, my question is. Have you ever helped a dog that was in a dog attack? I have. Um, and those are probably the scariest ones because you never know what they're going to come in looking like. Um, and you have to be really quick in making sure that they are pain, you get your pain covered for them. But I've definitely worked with quite a few dog attacks. Um, so it's important to keep your dogs on a leash so that they don't have access to the other dogs. Have you ever worked with a dog with like, I mean, like an animal with brain cancer or like brain damage? Yeah, so um, right now I actually work with a lot of neurologic patients. So sometimes that can be like a stroke or something. Sometimes it can be a brain tumor. Um, sometimes it can be um, just a block, like a blockage somewhere. Um, so, yeah, I work with a lot of those patients now, actually, and they do pretty well. And you get them walking and moving and, yep. um, yeah, yep. yeah. We work with them and, and get them able to be functional and move, move around and have a good, good life once they get moving. So, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. That's, that must be a wonderful part of being a vet where you see, um, your, the results of what you're doing, the treatment, and you see success, and an animal is returned to um, normal functioning. That must be wonderful. Okay, so uh, Mr. Mike, was that it, or was there a couple more? Uh, yes, yeah, sorry, a couple more if we could. Um, yeah. And then one more, Mr. Mike? Yeah, yeah I think uh, Ad, if we can do Adeline, I don't think she's gotten a chance yet, so E-D-E. Uh, did you want to be a vet when you were older, or uh, other stuff that you want to have? I have wanted to be a veterinarian since I could say doggy, um, so since I was very little, um, but I also am a fitness instructor, so I work with people on the fitness side and um, getting them in shape as well and strong, so, but yeah, I've always wanted to be a veterinarian. That was never a question. <laughs> Adeline, do you want to be a veterinarian? Vet, <laughs> a veterinarian. You do. I don't. Oh, you don't. Oh, okay. What do you want to be? No, I do want to. Be. Oh, you do. Wonderful. Okay. Well, I will look forward to having you back when you are much older and you've been through vet school. You can come and be one of our steam stars. Okay. Now it's your chance to, to um, show us your animals. So if everybody. Uh, if you have an animal, if my animals would sit still long enough, I would try myself. So we're just going to, um, I'm, I'm going to put my view on gallery view. You can do the same if you can, and then you can see everyone else's animals. Okay, so let me go through them. So what have we got? Adeline has got a beautiful lab, a sort of a golden colored lab. He's fast asleep. No, I think it's a lab or a doodle, but she looks like a lab. She's a lab or doodle. Okay, good. Thank you. 
Shailen's got a, is that an Australian Shepherd? I think it might be. Um, he is an Australian Shepherd, was I right? Okay, he's, good. He's an Australian cattle dog mixed with like a border collie. Oh, he looks beautiful color. And we have Zander. Now he's got something in a tank. Actually, I'm going to spotlight him because he's going to get his. Oh, oh, and Miss Miss Cheryl's actually got her doggy there as well. So we'll see you in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow. So are we going to guess what that is that Zander has? I can't see. What is it, Zander? It's a bucket of gecko. Oh, it's a gecko. Wow. Miss uh, Miss Cheryl, have you ever um, treated a gecko? I have not, but I have treated bearded dragons. Oh, oh, well, that's it's quite similar, isn't it? Very similar, but no, I have not treated a gecko. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, well, thank you, Zonda. That's brilliant. I really would love to come and actually see him, but on the screen. Right, so, okay, back to my gallery view. Let's just have another look. Um, oh, what's this one that Rogers has in um, a container with a blue top? I have, I have a pet scorpion that I caught. Oh my goodness. Okay, so um, you probably can't take him out to show us, can you? That's probably not He advisable. lost his stinger, but I don't really want to take him out because he could get loose in the house. Oh, but, absolutely. Uh, don't take him out. <laughs> he's a striped-tailed scorpion. And his name is Deficit. His name is what? Yeah. Okay, right. Well, thank you. I bet that sure. is um, a very, a very interesting pet study every day. Um, okay, and Katie? Yes, Mike? Yeah, sorry, maybe you're on it. Yeah, Katie and Lily joined late, but they had a, had a question they'd like to ask if we could. Oh, sure. Katie and Lily. Let me just look at Katie and Lily. There you go. Um, what is your favorite thing about being a veterinarian? I love being able to snuggle all the animals every time I get to be all the one. That's my favorite part. That would be my favorite. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite. The dog. <laughs> well, there you go. You need to become a canine rehabilitation therapist if you want to spend your whole day with dogs. Yeah. Um, I think. Dogs, cats. Yeah, and cats. well. That would be a feline rehabilitation specialist. Which I also do as well. I work with cats. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. So um, let me go back to gallery, make sure that we've looked at all these wonderful animals. Katie has a what looks like a labradoodle poodle, maybe? It's a golden doodle. It's a golden doodle. Very close. It's a gold doe. Okay. And then Allison, she has, I, I can't see what your animal is, but I did a minute ago. What have you got, Allison? Um, I've got a little puppy Maltese. Oh, oh, very His name's cute. Max. Oh, very oh. cute. Awesome. Yeah, very and cute. And he's just walking away. He's just going to... I'm on... I'm in my backyard right now. And he's just... And I'm on the trampoline because he's like the only thing else on this trampoline. Oh, yeah. Animals do like trampolines. Okay, we appear to have is that a rabbit bethany do you have a bunny rabbit yes oh he's oh, very cute her name is coconut and she's blind in one eye oh okay. but she manages to get around because she's got one eye that she can see with yeah it's beautiful i love the name coconut it's really cute and Darby the dog is a Bichon Frise, apparently. And I don't know who Darby the dog belongs to. Uh, this is my dog, Gracie, and she's a Bichon Frise. She's and very cute. Her. She looks very, very calm as well, as well. Very well behaved to sit still whilst you're on the screen. Thank you. This is um, Lush. This is... Oh, yes. This is my dog, um, Biggie, and he's a um, Mastiff and Bulldog mix. Good boy. He's very cute. Thank you. And 
with any final offering? Oh, um, my yeah, Marley. Family. Marley would like to share. Marley, okay. Hi, Marley. Hi. This is Sammy. This is my dog, Samson. And he's a German Shepherd Boxer Max. Oh, so cute. Beautiful. Yeah, he is beautiful. Now, I'm going to go back to um, Miss Cheryl because she did actually have her doggy on her lap earlier. But is he still is he still there? Is he available? Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> hey, there we go. Hi, Miles. This is yeah. Miles. <laughs> Miles. Miles is disappearing on the green screen oh, at the no, moment. If, if, if you put him right in front of you, it, 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 he's not. Yeah. There we go. Oh, he's, he's cute. Miles, you want to turn your head? There you go. Uh, oh, he looks like he's been eating something green. Yeah, he's <laughs> in the yard. <laughs> okay, Miles is 11. And he is a lab hound mix, and he's going to run away for a moment. <laughs> uh, yeah, and he is uh, very active. He likes he likes to run. He's a runner. So, and that's yeah. another really important thing about looking after pets, isn't it? Is getting them enough exercise. I, yeah, we have, I have. It's a great excuse to actually get human exercise as well, isn't it? Taking your dogs for a walk. It sort of very doubles much. up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, fish! Yeah. So, um, I have a, I have a, um, fish. Um, named Tulip. She's a red beta fish. Um, she, her type of fish she is is a crown, um, crown tail beta fish. And whenever I put my finger on the tank, she comes. You see her by that purple plant? She's coming. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah, you've got your fish. Tail. You got your fish very well trained. Yeah, and I have a snail in there somewhere. It's hiding behind one of the plants. That's fascinating. It's a beautiful tank. It looks very clean. The water looks really clear. You obviously look after your fish very, very well. Thank you for showing us your fish. Okay, I've got one more question for Miss Cheryl. What advice would you give to our um, young viewers here about becoming a vet? If they are thinking about becoming a vet now, what, what can they do now and in the future to make sure that they can follow their dreams? So I would make sure that you work really hard in science and you like science and you like school. Because if you don't like school, you have a long way to go <laughs> when it comes to vets. Um, and, but you can do it and know that you're really, if you put your mind to it, you can get into that school and do really well with it. Um, but make sure you take different courses and also look into other avenues. Make sure you don't forget your, your arts and your, um, other extracurriculars because it's good to be well-rounded and make sure that you don't just focus on one thing. It's important to like multiple things too. Yeah. I think you definitely illustrated that with all of your, um, your hobbies and pastimes as, uh, as a child. As the, you, you, you seem to be a very accomplished um, musician, horse rider, swimmer, and everything else in between. So yeah, that's brilliant. Okay, so, well, thank you very much, um, Cheryl. It's been great having you. Um, thank you for having so, <laughs> It's been great. On that note, we're gonna say goodbye everyone thank you so much for joining i hope you have enjoyed hearing all about being a vet from um dr cheryl and thank you so much